Hi, I'm Madeleine Grummet and I'm here at the Wade Institute of Entrepreneurship at the University of Melbourne. We're going to be having a chat today to John Yo, and John is the curator of TEDx Melbourne and he is going to be bringing two of our Wade Institute master's students to the stage at TED this year, which is pretty amazing. Mont Q, who was an alumni from last year, and Laura Youngson, who's one of the current students. They are incredible humans and they're going to tell you all about their rebel and revolutionary stories on the TEDx stage. Join us to hear more about their stories. Thanks guys for being with us today. John, um, tell us a bit more about what TEDx uh, Melbourne's all about. Sure. Well, I mean, I think everyone knows the TED brand, but TEDx is an independently licensed event. So we had an opportunity to build a, a TED-like event in, in the Melbourne Geographic. So I've been doing that for about eight years now. And Great. And this year's theme, what are the key kind of things that are going to be coming to that stage? Yeah, so themes, rebels, revolutionaries and us. So it's really around people who have taken an, a general idea or even a general concept and just kind of pushed that a little bit further, which is why Mom and Laura are on the stage actually, they've done something a little bit distinctive and edgy around their core work, so that's what we're exploring mostly. Awesome, it sounds pithy and, uh, and super exciting. Um, so Mond Q uh, is going to tell us a little bit what he's going to be talking about. Mond is an alumni of the Master of Entrepreneurship here, and Mond, actually Mond does an amazing amount of stuff, so Mond, why don't you tell everyone what you're going to be talking about? Yeah. So, I'm formally trained as an architect, I went to architecture school, but after, I guess, traveling the world and seeing a lot of things, I've changed my course of what architecture could do, and I really want to change the perception of what architecture means to people and what can be envisioned in the future, and I think I've taken a little bit of a rebellious approach in how the digital landscape merges with the physical, and I think it's going to be really evident in the next few years of how architecture is going to penetrate um, the world within the digital realm. Uh, but also how that would definitely affect our lives through like Airbnb, through Uber, through all these new digital platforms that are coming out. Our understanding of place is going to be completely different. And uh, that's what I'll be talking about. I can't reveal too much, uh, just because there's a lot of surprises in the actual talk that I want to talk about. Uh, but yeah, I'm super excited about it. And I think uh, this year's theme of Rebels, Revolution is us really seeing well with me. Yeah, we, we can't wait to hear what you bring to the stage. I know you're working with John at the moment uh, to get that story together. So a real live rebel we have with us, and that is Laura Youngson. Um, Laura, tell us a bit about what you're going to bring to the stage. Yeah, so um, I want to talk about actually how you take an idea from the grassroots into a, and turn it into a global movement. So I was just sat exactly like this on a sofa complaining, getting really frustrated about women's sports and how women are treated in the media when they play sports, how there are fewer opportunities for girls and women to play. Uh, and instead of just complaining at the TV, I decided to get up and do something about it. So I pulled together a team and we went to play the world's highest altitude soccer match. So three months ago, stood at the top of Kilimanjaro, playing 90 minutes of soccer and setting a world record. Um, so I'm going to talk to everyone at TEDx Melbourne about how you can inspire yourself and also how you can take an idea and make it bigger than yourself and take it on. So yeah, wow. super excited. Amazing. And John, uh, which other rebels and revolutionaries are going to be joining you for TEDx this year? Oh, we are testing my memory now. Um, probably the most notable is uh, Dean Redut, who was taken as a child soldier when he was six and forced to fight in South Sudan. Wow and really around, he's now a human rights lawyer. So he's really talking about, well, you can imagine someone who doesn't grow up with any social contracts or constructs or any sort of social overlays because he had to survive the entire time. So he's very free thinking and very open-minded about the way he approaches ideas, the way he thinks about situations, the way he solves problems. Makes him a great lawyer, but also makes him a great advocate for you know, what rebels really do, what they really think about when we're used to just following the conventional. Yeah, so. wow. What an amazing job you have. Like, what is it, yeah. is it a great position for you to be in to just be able to have incredible people around you all the time yeah. telling their stories? I get to meet some of the smartest people in town and not in town um, around whatever they happen to be doing. Um, I like to think it's a great opportunity for, for, um, for clever people doing interesting things. And so, always on the lookout for that type of um, thinking. And then, so we have opportunities. Partly through our networks and partly through the communities we hang out with to really explore that in, in, in great depth. Yeah, yeah, totally. So what what makes an idea spread? What what is it? Oh look. the definition I like to work with my speakers is it's got to be remarkable out of outside of your field of expertise or your industry. It's one thing to be 
acknowledged within your industry for the great work you do, but for the people who get acknowledged outside of that industry, um, they're the people that are really breaking ground and really opening the possibility for how ideas can really be universally applicable. So, yeah, and, and I suppose going to what you were saying, Mom, it's sort of about redefining humanity. Uh, in a way, you, you are changing something at scale, mm. and whether that's thought or, or action. Yep. Let's talk more about your this idea of you know really changing architecture and how we think about it. Mm. Uh, you, can you explain a little bit more about that space that you work in, and at sure. Nolta particularly, which is your sure. amazing digital project? Yeah, sure. So, personally, um, architects through this gruesome process of seven years just to design things. And then we have to manifest it like in a building and the outcome of a building. And that's one form it can take. We put so much energy and so much hard work into something that potentially never gets realized, right? Yeah. They're all existing on paper. They're things that, to be honest, it's almost like artwork. People don't really have any way to like embrace it or connect to it. And for me, I felt like, well, we do so much work. Why restrict it to just buildings? Why not think about problems in the world that we can solve that as an architect, we bring so many people together, right? We bring, you know, the craftsmen, we bring the builders, we bring things, but why not expand that? You know, bring in actors, bring in graphic designers, bring in like, you know, coders, bring in things that actually tackle some of the world's problems without having to restrict yourself to just bricks and mortar. And I think for me, that's a completely different way of thinking about how an architect can practice. And I feel like, don't be so siloed off. Start embracing what's happening around us because we are, are living in an information era where information is so easy to be, um, to get these yeah. things. Um, so you're actually rebelling against your industry creating revolutionary yeah, projects. Yeah, like projects. Yeah, right. What I love about Mon's thinking is really around how he's, he really thinks very deeply about the experience that the, the users of a space might need to be and doesn't restrict it to the construct of bricks and mortar. Yeah. It extends it to digital, it extends it to artistic, it extends it to the, the human aspect. And all those are really sort of a modern take on how we feel we need to connect and communicate as human beings. Totally. And some of that might have come from, as part of the Master of Entrepreneurship, you do some modules in design thinking and human-centred design. And so, do you use any of that in your approach to your construct, either digital or bricks and mortar? Um, I feel like what the Master of Entrepreneurship did really well was actually make projects feasible, right? Um, being able to look at the skill set of an architect, not just in the design role, but also how can we fund this? How can we actually get it out there in the real world and get people behind it? Not just architects, but you know, venture capitalists or angel investors or even just people that don't have a design background. How do you communicate value? And I felt like that was something that I really got out of the way. Yeah, right. And Laura, um, what you're effectively doing through Equal Playing Field is building a movement, mm -hmm. really. Um, and, and in, in my experience, I, I'm a huge fan of TED and I'm obsessed with TED Talks. I watch way too many of them actually. Um, but, uh, but a lot of the time you do get this sense that some people who take a TED stage do carry people forward with them. Their power of influence is, is, really, is really absolute. For you, have you got a vision for where you want to take your movement for the world? I think what we've found is we've just connected with these incredible coaches from around the world and all these women who have kind of been passed over and we talk about women's sport and it's always sports brackets women that you, it's always an afterthought and so actually having this ability to connect with the women that are already doing incredible things already inspiring teenage girls to play um, and to play sports and all the benefits that come from that i think the best thing for me is having the response globally of people saying yeah that's me i, I do that as well great, come join us and we're going to build you a platform to then um, start changing some of the, the way it's perceived. So hammering on the media. Already we've been in media outlets having, I complained that I can't see my role models, I can't see my heroes. And for me, being on the TEDx stage, well, at least I'm there, I'm talking about my story. So if that inspires someone else to come and tell their story, that's fantastic. Absolutely. So, and that's yeah. how you ignite, you know, change really isn't people yeah. buying into that. Tell me, John, what's the difference between a rebel and a revolutionary? Cool. <laughs> That's a really interesting question. I, I, I think 
the, there is some talks about this. So I don't want to kind of give away too much, but the, the, there is. Oh, there's 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 Sorry. <laughs> there is some context around uh, rebels with a cause and rebels without a cause, yeah. and people who want to be destructive for destructive sake, and people who want to be destructive for constructive sake. Right. And so revolutionaries, I feel tend to have a little bit more of an iterative thinking around what they're doing, about the projection around where they're going. A lot of the people that I come and approach say, look, I don't know why you're interested in approaching. I've been doing this for decades. It just happens to be topical now. And it's actually the small things that they were doing over long periods of time that created the revolution. Mm, that gathers that movement exactly. and that, that influence. And the right. fact that we can all actually be the revolutionary if we just choose to pick one thing that's meaningful to us and continue to do it over longer periods of time. Like Ron and Laura. Yeah, oh, exactly. All right, so we're going to finish off and we uh, we hope you'll all join uh, John and Mon and Laura for TEDx Melbourne. Uh, you can get tickets at TEDxMelbourne.com. Yes. Uh, and you can jump on the Wade Institute or Melbourne University to find out more about Mond and Laura and all the amazing things that have brought them to this moment. Before we close off, who's your favourite rebel or who's your favourite revolutionary? Choose one. Oh, so hard. Me, it's Gandhi. Gandhi? It's pretty easy. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that is a, that is a really tricky one. I think it's, for me, it's some of the, the female scientists that were pioneers in the UK, and especially um, like Jocelyn Bell by now, so she didn't win any Nobel Prizes but fundamentally changed the way we look at astronomy. Um, so it's all these kind of overlooked people that history will, will show that they were, were truly the revolutionaries. What about you, Mont? Oh, I think... You can say yourself. No, I think, I think definitely <laughs> Elon Musk I mean, at the moment, just because he has a core belief and he's not willing to compromise on what he's believing in. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's, way, he's way future forward. Well, thank you so much, guys, for joining us uh, to chat about TEDx. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all there. Congratulations. And John, thanks for bringing to Melbourne such an amazing, uh, amazing group of ideas. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks.